so tell me do you have any problem with your syllabus or any questions if you have to discuss it then let us discuss all these <clears throat> because we have already finished our syllabus and we have also discussed the 10 probable uh, topics uh, which uh, are expected to come for this examination mm -hmm. so any topic if you want to discuss uh, then we can discuss the things kiko you joined the program later so do you have any questions uh, with uh, your uh, completion of syllabus or any topic which has been not uh, undertaken by you you can discuss can you unmute yourself ah uh, sorry uh, i'd like to understand the kariana mita importance of spiritual friendship hmm. spiritual friendship you had discussed about the kalyan mitata in our last class we ah, yes, yes, about uh, what are the uh, qualities for being a ah yes uh, mm. kalyan mitra so in Vishuddhimag also we had discussed that what is Kalyanamitra and who can be Kalyanamitra, what are the duties of a Kalyanamitra for undertaking one of the subjects of the Kamathan, that is of there are 14 number. So uh, Kalyanamitra, uh, there are some qualities which have been discussed also in Anguttar Rikaya. In Anguttarukai, there is a detailed description of uh, that who can be a Kalyanamitra and what are the duties of Kalyanamitra in selecting uh, uh, meditation uh, subjects uh, as well as uh, how can he perform in the society. So we had uh, discussed some of the points related with uh, that uh, in our last class. So... Uh, there was one topic which we, we had discussed in uh, our last class uh, uh, about the Brahma Bihar also, noble way of living. And uh, under that topic, we had discussed uh, about the four uh, uh, stages or four points of uh, Brahma Bihar, noble way of living. That is the uh, metta, friendliness. Uh, uh, in Sanskrit, it is a uh, metri. Uh, second is the karuna, compassion. Third is the joy, uh, unalloyed joy or mudita. And fourth is the uh, upekha, uh, that is the indifference samta bhav. So we had also discussed that these four qualities in a very detailed manner. So um, any more topic, if you wish to discuss, then uh, you can note down. Then we can make a, a discussion on that uh, individually. Rahul, do you have any question? Mm, I don't have any question, but uh, it is for, if it is possible, I want to discuss the Buddhist economics. Uh, Buddhist economics, uh, how can we discuss? Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, the whole uh, uh, economics, uh, uh, Buddhist economics, uh, if you go through the book, uh, a small is beautiful, Sukhamar, Sumakar. Sumakar has written a very good book uh, that is the uh, uh, prize winner also, uh, mm. small is beautiful. And in that book, he has also discussed some of the points related with uh, uh, Buddhist economics also. The whole economics, uh, if you go through that, okay. then uh, in the eightfold path, uh, whatever we are having, Samma Ajivo. And then in under the heading Samma Ajivo, Samma Vyamo, uh, we are having the concept of uh, Buddhist economics also. Uh, 
uh, here it has been said that how we have to maintain moderation in our uh, meals as well as how a person can be satisfied with our uh, belongings also. Uh, if you go through the Ambatha Sutta, and then you will find that Buddha says that Ghasa Chadana Paramatai Bhikkhu Santutto Hoti, that a, a Bhikkhu or a person must be satisfied with the Ghasa, um, that is the grass, as well for covering the body, as well as uh, the uh, fruits and uh, other herbal things for his, sustaining his body. So, if you go through right livelihood, the concept of right livelihood out of the Eightfold Path, that relates our Buddhist economies. And in uh, uh, Dhammapada also, we are having that how Santutti Param Dharam. So a person must be satisfied whatever he is getting the things. And for Bhikkhu, it is said that he must uh, keep only four things, that is the Chivara, Pindapath, uh, Senasana, and Rukhmul Senasanam, uh, uh, that is the Rukhmul Senasanam, and fourth requisite is called as uh, Putti Mutti Bhisaja Parikhara. So these are the only four requisites which are meant for a Bhikkhu who has renounced the household life and he has taken the life of recluse. So he must be satisfied with whatever he is getting uh, the meals, whatever the clothes he is meant for the Chivara, that is the Antarvasaka, Uttrasanga, Sanghati. Only the three types of clothes uh, which a monk should keep. And for Pindapath, it is said that uh, for Alms Bowl, whatever he is getting for sustaining of his meal, he can take the meal from the door of the house, not for, uh, you can say, making uh, uh, healthy of his body. So whenever you are taking more meals, then it creates some problem. And it is also said that whatever, if you have a small desire, then you, you will have uh, a, a small suffering also. And if you have uh, 100 desires, then you will have uh, 100 sufferings also. And if you have uh, 1000 desires related with your uh, living, then you must suffer. Uh, 1,000 sufferings also. So, uh, Buddha says that you must be moderate in your uh, habits, taking meals also, in sustaining of the body. And whatever we take the meals, it is only for the sustaining of body that we can uh, behave properly with the members of the society, not for taking the fill. Even the monks are not uh, supposed to take meals. Uh, whatever he takes the meals, uh, it is seen that uh, some of the uh, persons who are holding the meals from the uh, houses after going there, and then he keeps the things in that way. So that is the uh, wrong mode of livelihood. And if you think Samma Ajivo, then it has been said that Micha Ajiv Pahai Samma Ajiv Kena Kapati Di Samma Ajivo. So the whole Buddhist economics uh, rounds uh, before the uh, eightfold path that is the Samma Ajivo. And it is also said that a person must refrain from the five types of uh, tradings or uh, business or profession that is called as mas banija mas uh, sat banija sat banija uh, bis banija so there are uh, uh, five types of profession or tradings which have been banned by our buddhist text in which there must not be trade of the weapons 
there must not be trade of alcohols there must not be trade of the poisons also there must not be trade of uh, human flesh also so there are five types of professions which have been banned or which have been prohibited by the buddha and it shows the buddhist economics also that how we have to maintain our things and in dhammapada also we find that how buddha talks about uh, ratthapind that is the if a person does not uh, behave properly related with the economy of the country he is eating the ratthapind that he is uh, uh, destroying the uh, treasure of the country so in that sense it has been said in the dhammapada also so the main thing is that how much uh, uh, you have uh, holding the things in anguttara nikaya buddha has also prescribed some of the things for maintaining uh, our grains or the foods also in which he is saying that arak sampada arak sampada means you have to um, make a protection of the belongings or whatever you are having the grains and the things for the if you have a earthquake and if there is a, a not a good crops in a season then whatever you have hold the grains you can sustain your family members and yourself also so it shows the buddhist economy and there are das raj dharm for a king and if you go through the das raj dharm you will find that how a king is uh, making uh, protection of the people as well as what he is performing his duty related with the Uh, sustaining of the society in the sense of that all there must not be any person who is hungry in the village or in the city or in the town town also so in that way there are ten duties the saraj dharma which have been prescribed in our uh, text also and then we in the jataka also we are having that how there are four types of such dhiti chag and virya these are the four things which have been prescribed by the buddha for uh, uh, our buddhist economy so when a king must perform such that is the truthfulness chag that he must sacrifice uh, the things to others also there must be a kind of alobha that is a kind of sacrifice to give someone uh, uh, for the sake of sustaining of the like and dhiti that one must have patience also uh, that uh, how much he is patient it also shows his quality uh, of a king that how he is behave, behaving properly with the members of the sangha or members of the society also so these are some of the things which are related with so out of the eight fold path we are finding that there are there is only one that is the samma ajivo and in agayu sut also there are some duties related with the king also and how persons of the society should behave the king it has been also discussed so in that way buddhist economy has been discussed in our pali text also any more question rahul or yourself uh professor uh, regarding the economy uh, buddha says uh, santutti parmang dhana means satisfaction is the Mm, wealth 
but uh, if persons become satisfied then uh, the new development will be stopped then how the economy will run this is the question how we can answer this question uh, <laughs> no, uh, san santrupte padam dhanam mm. so if you see one must be satisfied mm. the, there is no end of uh, uh, desire and uh, we are also having a, a theory related to the four noble truth you will find that there are only two uh, main uh, causes or main roots of the arising of suffering they are ignorance of vijja as well as a tanha that is a trishna so these are the two factors or these are the two uh, roots which are uh, responsible for arising of the suffering so here uh, buddha says that one must be very much aware of uh, the six senses also chakku sot ghan jihva kai and man also so whenever any sense which has the contact of the respective object namely roop sadd gandh ras potabba or dhamma yatana then if there is the contact sansarga chakshu sampasa uh, rupam pasati when where there is a contact of chakku i with the object roop then chakku biyanam upajjati so here there is the arising of the chakku biyan and through the chakku biyan we are able to know or sot vigyan or ghan vigyan beyond or jiva beyond we are able to know the individual or each uh, object or alamban also and whenever there is the contact of any object then there is the arising of feeling also feeling that is the sukha vedana somanas vedana dukha vedana dobanas vedana and upekka vedana and if there is the arising of the vedana or feeling with that object whenever there is a contact of respective object then this vedana creates desire also vedana pachaya tanha and if there is a desire uh, of that uh, of getting of the, the things after the sukha vedana if a person uh, desires for the sensual pleasures or if a person so uh, gets the domanas vedana then he uh, feels the painful suffering or the um, feeling which is not being experienced by our body so this is the and after that whenever there is a contact with the fe- Uh, object then feeling arises vedana and then after vedana desire to uh, arise that is why it is called as in the second noble truth yayam tanha panubhavika nandi rag sagata tat tat ra vinandani setidam kama tanha bhav tanha and vibhav tanha these are the three kinds of desires kam bhav and vibhav which are arising based upon the you can say coming into existence and they are based upon the lust as well as attachment so these are the two things and whenever the desire arises then it arises in mind that how i have to get that object also then the desire is being translated into action our hands or the feet or any things that the respective uh, senses they are uh, becoming ac- activated and this is called as uh, a strong desire that uh, balvati tanha so when the tanha is being translated into an action this is the uh, balvati tanha and it is called as uh, upadan so upadan if you go through the abhidhamma traditions there are four kinds of upadan that is the kam upadan bhav ditti upadan bhav upadan and avijja upadan 
so there are four kinds of a strong desire which are arising only on the basis of the you can say feeling or whenever the context so it is said that the respective object must restrain to get associated with the respective object the thing is that chakku or i must restrain to get associated or get involved with the beautiful objects or melodious song which are uh, very good in hearing so one must refrain in melodious song so one must be satisfied otherwise it will create some problem so santutti param dhanam it means that whatever you are having you must sustain your family members yourself and whatever you are holding it is the property of the sangha or it is the property of the nation so you must not think about holding the wealth for yourself but it is in the interest of the country that is the rat or nation so in that sense buddha says that you must be moderate in your eating the things you must be moderate in your uh, clothing or you must be very much moderate in living uh, in the text for the monks it is said that you must uh, live in the night at the root of the tree but it is not feasible for the lay persons but whatever the small belongings you have you can sustain yourself for the sake of the family members so in that sense it is called and regarding the engineering and technology and the advancement of the uh, development of a country the whole thing is depends upon the economy and if you, uh, the economy of a nation is being is a uh, strong then everything is possible so we have to cultivate ourselves in not in holding of the wealth but how we are going to contribute in the advancement or the development of a nation which we are meant for that so in that sense it is called as santutti param dhan saram santutti means that you must be very much aware or restrain your senses not to get associated with the respective objects otherwise it will create a problem or it will create suffering and whenever there is the suffering there is the bad feeling and oh, um, good feeling also and these are the respective causes for arising of the suffering and pleasant feeling also so we must restrain our senses in that sense it is called as santutti param dharam and it is also said in the dhammapad if you go through the one gatha in the dhammapad yathapi bhamaro puppam ban gandham ahatheyam paleti rasam adai evam gami muni chare ki just like a bee who who just roams on the form and color of the or size of the you can say uh, flower without disturbing the color and form of the flower a bhavra or bee which roams and it takes the essence of the flower that is the rasam rasam adai that it after taking the essence or flavor of that flower he goes away that we in the same way a muni game chare without disturbing the uh, structure of the society or any system caste system or whatever buddhism does not believe in the caste system but whatever the there are the systems of the good governance or uh, sustaining of the society he must maintain so in that sense it is called as we can say so a compare has been given in the dhammapada that we must behave like uh, our bee bhavra 
दैट यथापि भमरोपुम वन गंधम अठयम विदाउट डिस्टर्बिंग द एसेंस एंड द कलर ऑफ द फ्लावर ही टेक्स अवे द एसेंस ए बी इन द सेम वे एम गामे मुनिचरे एम सेज और ए मुनि मस्ट बिहेव इन द सोसाइटी सो दिस इज द इन दैट सेंस in the whenever we are contributing and whenever we are not uh, hoarding the wealth to ourselves it is automatically going to the development or advancement of nation or country so in that way it is being developed so in that sense it is called as and sukhamar also a small is beautiful he has uh, discussed about the moderation of the mills that is that is the main uh, uh, teachings of the buddha which talks about the moderation of the wealth one must be very much moderate in the taking mills also every day thing uh, whatever you are uh, we are performing our duty so there must be moderation also so in that sense it is called as a ecos and when the things are in the uh, treasury of the nation it is certainly for the advancement or the development of a nation or rat or rashtra any more question there is also question on buddhist uh, social system also society what is the structure of the society at the time of the buddha we had discussed also social dimensions of the buddha earlier in the syllabus it was mentioned buddhist economy buddhist uh, social system and there was one more question uh, polity, uh, polity economy and uh, one more questions if you go through the syllabus i don't remember you will find that there were three aspects which we had discussed in the beginning of the class also professor hmm. uh, this uh, we have five uh, question number 5 hints for this paper fourfold immeasurable teaching and social affliction immeasurable that is called as not measurable not immeasurable means apraman apraman means that which cannot be measured mm. they are apamaya in pali it is called as apamaya and in the brahma vihar whatever we had just talked yeah. uh, discussed about what is the brahma vihar brahm vihar is made up of two words brahm and vihar brahm is in the sense of shrest setto brahmoti setto that is the noble and vihar is the way of life that is the viharati so brahm vihar is the name of noble way of living there are four constituents under the brahm vihar namely metta that is the matri or friendliness or universal brother, brother brotherhood so this has been defined as parhit kamata ti uh, metta metta is the name of the friendliness through which our antipathy or hatred is being seized so that is why it is called as parhit kamata a desire to help others this is called as metri sinhati iti metta sinhati iti metta means one who has the loving kindness sneha sneha means sneha in sanskrit mijjati iti metta mijjati iti means that who calm gives calmness to our consciousness for the sake of welfare of others when one thinks that there all there must be sabbe satta bhavantu sukhi tatta arogino khemno hunti whenever there is a feeling like that that let all the beings be happy and if you go through the mitta sutta 
रिमेम्बर इन द सुत निपात देर इज अत मिथ्ता मिथ सुत इन विच देर आर मिथ्ता भावना ऑल्सो दैट हाउ फ्रेंडलीनेस काइंड बी डेवलप्ड and in that sense it is called as karniya mit sut that what must be done and it has been said matha mata jatha niyam puttam ek putt rak manasam that as a mother protects her small baby at the cost of her own life in the same way a person must behave in the society just like a mother who uh, gives her sacrifice at the cost of her own life also for the well being of a small baby or a small child so that has been said there. and it has been also said that na khuddam samachare that whatever whenever you are walking you are moving you are sleeping you are uh, sitting so in whatever postures you are having you must have the uh, quality of a parhit kamata that let beings be happy let there be no be any agony in the human beings let there be no suffering among the human being this type of universal kindness or loving kindness sneheti ti metta nejati ti ti metta and parhit kamata this is called as friendliness so if you go through the mit sut there are 20 verses which have been meant that how you are sleeping sitting and whether and there is also said that friendliness must be developed with without discrimination of the caste color and creed also and even a small big or uh, the great so suppose there is a small insect so we must behave properly with the small insects also living beings also plants and animals also so we have to develop a parhit kamata that a desire to help all the living beings plants nature uh, and other things so these have been discussed in this so this is called as unmeasurable unmeasurable means the length of the practice or the development of the metta is unlimited it cannot be measured that this is the end of your friendliness now you stop it in that sense it is called as a praman it cannot be measured by waiting giving way of that that how much uh, kilo gram or kilo uh, they are having so in that sense it is called as um, unlimited unmeasurable and second is called as um, compassion that is the karuna karuna is made up of two words kam and runati kam iti dukham runati iti tam pavisati bina sai bai mati cha so here karuna is the name of entering into the suffering of the human of uh, human beings and how you are making an effort of eradication of the or destruction of the suffering of others पर दुखे हदाय कंपनम उपन्नम होती ती करुणा सो व्हेन वर यू आर सीइंग द सफरिंग ऑफ अदर्स एंड इट क्रिएट्स अ वाइब्रेशन इन योर हार्ट दैट हाउ यू हैव टू एंड इट गिव्स यू कैन से सेकिंग ऑफ योर हार्ट आल्सो दैट हाउ द सफरिंग ऑफ अदर्स कैन बी रिमूव्ड एंड व्हेन वर यू आर मेकिंग एन एफर्ट फॉर द इरेडिकेशन ऑफ द सफरिंग ऑफ अदर्स this is called as karuna so karuna is a par dukhe hadai kampanam ti karuna or in second way that kamiti dukham runati iti tam pavisati pavisati means entering into the suffering of others vinasai bhai mati cha 
how you are making an effort of the destruction of suffering of others also. This is called as karuna. And for karuna bhavana, there are so many practices which have been given in the text also. And this karuna has been, the, uh, it is called as uh, sattu alambana, that all the human beings uh, have only one object that how the destruction of the suffering of others can be eradicated. So that is why karuna has only sattu alambana. And whenever a karuna arises with the, a, a, to the Buddha, to the Blessed One, that karuna is called as Mahakaruna. And that Mahakaruna is not for an individual person, but for a whole human beings. Bahujan hitai, bahujan sukhai, lokanu kampaya thai, dev manushanamti. So here with the, the karuna compassion, if you go through the uh, first, uh, uh, after following the Sangha, Buddha says that bhajan hitai, bhajan sukhai, lokanu kampai, athai. Here lokanu kampai, anukampa. Here anukampa is also another name of karuna. So in Dhammasangani, for karuna, there are other words also like daya, anudaya, karuna, uh, and uh, mahakaruna. So, and there is another term which has been given, amoha. That is the amoho, the samadithi, samadithi, the panya. So, these are some of the synonyms of the karuna which have been given here. So, all the you can say. Mm, karuna is a universal compassion for the eradication of the human beings, animal, plants, and uh, whatever we are uh, having the animal beings, you, one must have the feeling of the eradication of the suffering of others. And not only the feeling, but how you are making an effort of the destruction of the suffering of others. This is called as Karuna. Third is called as uh, Mudita, unalloyed joy. Unalloyed joy that whenever you are hearing the good or welfare of others or your neighbors, and when you feel happiness or gladness after hearing the good news of the, your relatives, your neighbors, it is called as unalloyed joy. Unalloyed joy means that when you do not have any fault in the joy or whatever the joy which is coming from within the body and mind, this is called as mudita. Mudita means there must be uh, gladness after hearing the uh, good news of others, you are, whenever a person who is in pleasant mood, one must not be any type of jealousy or irsia or abhiman uh, or martial miserliness. So these are some of the qualities which have been given for the uh, mudita. So mudita is unalloyed joy after hearing the welfare of others, whether they are neighbors or your relatives or persons of the society. This is uh, mudita. And fourth is called as upekha. Upekha is neither pleasant feeling nor unpleasant feeling. That is called as the... Uh, Indifferent feeling. Indifferent feeling here is in the sense of samata bhav. That you must be neither uh, uh, moral nor immoral. But you have to behave indifferent. That is the neutral feeling. That is called as. And the uh, simile of a full person. Mudh janesu pekha. That is just like a full person has the 
he does not know any restriction between the moral dhammas, any moral dhammas, because he does not have such type of tendency. So this is called as upekha here, and this is the samata bhav, that you must have be equality to all the four kinds of the varnas or the jati or the persons or the nature and environment or living beings or plants or animals. You must have the samata bhav. So this is called as a, so the limit of the karuna as well as uh, mudita and upekha are not limited. It is uh, unlimited towards all the human beings for the sake of the bahujanitai, bahujan sukhai, lokanukampai, atthai, devmanuswanamti. So whenever there is a thinking of that, this is called as apraman, that is the unmeasurable, the practice or the development of these four uh, unmeasurable un points, they cannot be measured by any, you can say, measurement or the scope of its practice is unlimited. So in that sense, that question, whatever you have said, for immeasurable, so this has been discussed. Any more question if you have? Mamuru Sato, do you have any question? Ah, no, I don't have any question because you have already covered all syllabus and all the questions. So I like to practice writing as, as okay, much as possible. You just uh, you write down, you memorize it as many times yeah. you are writing, yeah. you are uh, memorizing, you are remembering the concepts, uh, and in that way it will help you in writing the answers yeah. of the questions in the examination hall. Yeah. So, uh, uh, as many times you can write down your answers, uh, you can write down and uh, it will help you in writing of the questions in the yeah. examination hall. Actually, writing in English is a difficult part for Japanese. <laughs> so, I understand, yeah, I but uh, yeah. uh, you, since you have been uh, uh, enrolled under the University of uh, uh, Pali and Buddhist studies, Colombo, you know. So the medium of uh, writing is only English. You have to express, you have to answer all the questions in English. Yeah. So in that way, you have to write uh, answers of the questions in a right manner also. And the content wise, whatever the points uh, which uh, have been discussed, uh, you must. Uh, uh, answer all those points in your examination. Yes. Thank you very okay. much. Yes. So you revise your questions, write down as many times you can, and then it will enhance your skill in writing the answers. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any more question, Kiko? No, no, thank you very much. I have no question. No. Hiroko, do you have any question? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Uh, yes, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> how about uh, Buddhism uh, punishment? Uh, is it? Is it so how should I think about, is it uh, based on uh, linear Pitaka? <laughs> yes, we have discussed about the punishment uh, and uh, based upon the 227 rules for the monks and 311 rules for the nuns, which have been prescribed uh, in Binay Pitaka in the text Mahavagga, Chulavagga, Parajika, Pachitya. These are the four texts. But the 227 rules for the monks and 311 rules for the nuns, they have been especially discussed in the Parajika and Pachitya text of Binay Pitaka. So um, the punishments have been also prescribed 
uh, for these rules if any one who transgresses any rule of the pati mukha bhikkhu pati mukha or bhikkhu ni pati mukha at the time of the uh, uposat ceremony on the 14th day of each month there is a uposat ceremony so in that if a person who confesses that he has not obeyed the such type of rule so according to that rule a bhikkhu is being punished whether it is a parajika or sanghadi phase so based upon that he is expelled from the sangha so we have discussed mainly on the basis of vinay pitaka text namely parajika and pachitya only thing is that for uh, other persons there are uh, if there is a uh, raj uh, there is a king rule so the punishments are being given the by the order of the king and whatever it has been prescribed by the raja whether it is a raja of varanasi or kasi and all our jambu deep india was divided at the time of the buddha in 16 mahajanpadas so mahajanpadas we are having the king respective kings also whether it is kosal mahajanapad kasi mahajanapad pravasti or uh, even mithila janapad so all there were uh, mahajanpadas and the for common people the rules even the baisali baisali was also a mahajanapad but ji ans we are having so all the mahajanpadas they were having their own rules for the punishment of the persons who have committed a, any uh, uh, sexual misdeeds or uh, uh, whatever a killing a living being or uh, stealing the things so whatever the immoral thing is uh, actions he uh, have been performed by a persons so we are not going to discuss all these the punishment which are given by a king because every mahajanpada mahajanpad was having their its own rule and even if you go through the baisali janpad mahajanpad buddha also says that baisali is observing the uh, sat aparihaniya dhamma there are seven rules which cannot make a state downfall downfall means if a person who is uh, performing the seven types of rule these seven types of rule are that one person must assemble uh, after fortnightly or monthly and they can uh, remove their uh, uh this agreements or whatever uh, the matter which has which has not been solved by the members of the society one must uh, assemble together even the religious persons whether it is uh, hindu um, buddhist uh, jain so whatever the religions uh, the faith they were observing they must be followed and they must be uh, given protection also so that protection must be given by the king and if a king performs protections to the all religions and here respect to all religions means about the secular ethics and secular ethics is not respecting only our religion but how you are uh, respecting to other religions also so bajians well also performing uh, equality towards all the religions and uh, bajians well also protecting the uh, females also the uh, daughters also females also there must be uh, uh, among the seven uh, aparihaniya dhamma it was said that women must be respected in the society 
and if the women are not respected then the state will fall away and there is another rule which has been given that old persons who are in the society they must be given protections as well as they must be given on rebel estate uh, status in the society also and another thing out of the seven is given that if any person of out of any religion or caste or color creed he wishes to enter into your estate then you must give shelter to in your estate also suppose a person who is not following your religion but he wants to come to your estate for the sake of shelter also so a state was also giving shelter at the time of the buddha also and the bajians were also giving the protections to the other persons who are coming from the other society and they must be respected in the society they must be given protections so these were given a, you can say the by the rules so whatever the punishment we are talking about for the ladies or for the householders these are meant or these are governed by the good governance of the king and for that we are having aganya sutta put dant sutta uh, there are some suttas which are discussing about the duties of a royal king and how he has to behave properly in the society and in the samaya phala sutta also how buddha talks about the uh, respect of all the six contemporary teachers at the time of the buddha also whether it is puran ka sap makhli gosal nikat nat putt sanjay balati putt so there were six contemporary teachers at the time of buddha also and everything is you uh, was okay so in samaya phala sutta buddha says that you do not criticize any faith or any thought of any teacher but you see that whether it hold the path the essence of the it hold the path is available in other thoughts or teachers or, or not if you find the essence of understanding of those uh, it hold path like seal samadhi and paiya then you can under, uh, take off that uh, and you have not to criticize other religions also so it is so uh, respect to all religions in mahaparibbhan sutta there is a detailed discussion about the sat aparihaniya dhamma that how bajians were protecting their religion faith Uh, elders uh, in the society women in the society the persons who were migrating from one state to another state so uh, buddha was saying in mahaparinibbana so sutta as long as the bajians are following these satar paharyani aparhani dhamma he will not fall away and he cannot be overpowered by other state also so buddha says that as long as these rules are being uh, followed by any state there cannot be fall or down fall of a state also so these are some of the things you can write down in your exam Thank any you more much. question uh, any uh, more question thank you very much so uh, we can meet in the next week also if you have so you we have uh, uh, our uh, time is over you might meet so let us meet together if you have any difficulty any question doubt you can note down you can let me one day before so that can i can also uh, make a dialogue with you all in a comfortable manner and we can discuss the thing in proper manner So, okay. okay thank you very much yeah. take care thank you very much thank you very much uh, good night to you all good night good night, good night. Good night. Good night.